everyone welcome to is it worth it today I'm going to review the first 10 books that I have read so far this year and I'm going to tell you whether it's worth it for you to spend your money and your time to read these so the first book that we are going to talk about is persuasion by Jane Austen now I really like Jane Austen books I like the time period and I like the style that she writes in and the storyline um, this is not my favorite Jane Austen book. Emma would be my favorite, but this was, I, I would say this one's second. I really enjoy this one. I like the storyline. Uh, the main character is just very relatable to me, and I felt um, all the circumstances that she was going through, I could relate to them, and they made me very emotional. So I really enjoyed it. It's a pretty quick read for me. It's about 200 pages, and I would recommend this for... Um, about teenage girl and up because it's just very relatable to that age it's about a, a girl who um, is helping her her family out and living with her sister and um, she ends up getting married in the end so it's a really fun um, book I would give this book a five out of five the next book that I have is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and this one was really interesting. It's told um, through letters, letters of an author to her editor and to these people that she begins a correspondence with on the island of Guernsey, the only part of the UK that was ever occupied during World War II. So it tells the story of how they formed a literary society on the island of Guernsey during the German occupation. Um, so I really enjoyed the storyline and the style of writing. The only thing about this is it does mention a character is homosexual, which I don't understand why it's even in there. And at the end, there is more uh, language than... There's a couple words throughout the book, but at the end, I feel like it's more concentrated. So, I wouldn't really say I would recommend this book. If you were going to read it, I'd say an older teenager or um, an adult. And I would give it uh, maybe a two and a half out of five, just because I really like the style writing and the time period. The next book is The Aeneid by Virgil, and I read this one for school. I actually read part of it last year, and then this year I um, finished it, and this is a story of how Rome was founded by Aeneas, and if you're a guy, you would probably like this book a lot because there's adventures, there's battles, there's all that fun stuff. Um, I personally didn't really like it, the style of... Um, ancient poetry isn't really my favorite thing out of the three ancient works of literature the Aeneid the Odyssey and the Iliad the Odyssey and the Iliad are by Homer and um, then the Aeneid is by Virgil and it is written in Latin whereas um, Homer writes in Greek but I actually like Homer's writings better than I like um, the Aeneid that's just personal preference um, but it is very helpful for the history of Rome and how it was founded and also it is referenced a lot in um, literature today and I think influenced a lot of how things were written and the history of Rome obviously. The next book, uh, or three books actually, are the set the Divine Comedy. comedy. So here's a Divine Comedy and the first one is Inferno, the second one is Purgatory, and the third one is Paradise. Um, I would say the um, Inferno is the best. I think it's very relatable to the Christian life, actually, because it goes through each of the sins that people are in hell for, and it kind of gives you a good perspective on the opposite of those sins and also on um, like what you could do to, to not be committing those sins and for it not to send you to hell of course we know that Jesus is the only way um, to not end up in hell but Dante gives his own um, works basically that can help you with that um, I like the Inferno the best because I feel like purgatory and paradise were just you could see the Catholicism a lot more than you could in Inferno because obviously purgatory is only a Catholic um, belief and the paradise was so Catholic with all the um, saints and the merits and the levels the hierarchy of heaven and there wasn't even a very much of a focus on God the um, Dante the pilgrim he's going through paradise 
and he goes, he's going towards the great light, which is God, but there's actually not that much talk about it. It's um, mostly when you get up there, it's about Mary and the saints and what they've done and where they are in heaven, um, and not much talk about God, so I didn't really like that a lot. But the, I really like the Inferno and how it shows the distance from God of people in hell and the different uh, punishments in hell that Dante thinks there are for each sin. But I think it also relates to in life. Um, you know, if you have the sin of greed, you're not going to be happy and you're not going to have, um, like, Christ and storing up treasures in heaven instead of on earth. So, just really good perspective. So, I would give um, maybe the Inferno a 4 out of 5 and then... Purgatory and Paradise, I would give each a 3 out of 5. And, let's see, the last book in print that I have is Here I Stand. Uh, it is about Martin Luther. Now, I had to read this for my church history class. And I'd say it's a very thorough explanation of his life and his influence on the Catholic Church during the Protestant Reformation. If you don't know, um, Martin Luther was the one who nailed the 95 Theses. Um, on the Wittenberg church door in 1517 and he sparked the Protestant Reformation. So it gives a very thorough just overview of everything that Luther did and um, his influence and what he started and everything in his life. So this book I would recommend if you want a scholarly overview of Martin Luther's life and his um, impact on the Reformation and everything he did. Um, but if you want something that is going to keep your attention, just be a really interesting, captivating read, this is not really the one for that. Um, it's definitely just a more of a scholarly overview of his life. So I learned a lot, but it took me a while to get through and um, wasn't as interesting as I would hope. So it wasn't as interesting as I hoped, but I would still give it um, a 3 out of 5 just for um, a very informative read. So the other three books that I read this year, I actually listened to on audiobook. Um, the first one was David Copperfield by Charles Dickens, and I listened to about half of that last year, and then I finished it this year um, because I started listening to things way more than I did last year. So David Copperfield, I feel like was just a typical Charles Dickens book. Um, it just follows his, I feel like he has his own um, storyline Dickens that he goes through and it's just you know the boy in unfortunate circumstances who finds his way in life and um, becomes this great man gets his things and whatever so um, as a uh, story and the writing um, it was pretty good but it wasn't my favorite um, even of the Charles Dickens book my favorite that he wrote would be um, Great Expectations with a, a lot of people disagree with me on that but um, either you love or hate Great Expectations but um, David Copperfield just I would give it a 3 out of 5 and um, I'd say teenager read it adult um, you would enjoy it and uh, I would definitely recommend trying to read some Charles Dickens just to get an experience of those classics and that time in English history um, the next book is called Alas Babylon and that is about, um, it's a fictitious story about if there was an atomic bomb dropped on the United States and how we would rebuild our lives from that. And it was very interesting and very entertaining. I couldn't stop listening to it. Um, it just, the story of rebuilding your life and the food, how do you get food whenever all the major cities have been just wiped out and the electricity and the water and all that stuff. It, um, I have been reminded of it a lot lately with the whole um, coronavirus and the panic and everything. I um, want to just tell people this is not an atomic bomb guys. The water supply is not going to go out and the power is not going to go out. It's going to be fine and you don't need to hoard all this food. Because um, in this book there are hoarders and there's it's just so fascinating to see this way of life that has completely been changed and they all mark their history from you know that day whenever just everything turned around and changed and now they're in this this completely different society you know they can't drive their cars and all so it was very fascinating I really enjoyed that book um there was some language I believe and a little bit of some immorality um but I think for an older teenager or an adult it was definitely minor and um, 
it didn't it wasn't completely like just added in there for filler stuff so I would recommend that one I think I would give it like a four out of five um, if you'd like to see my official ratings and reviews you can go to my Goodreads Haley Beck and um, see all of the ratings that I give for each book that I'm reading and see my progress throughout the year for the books um, now the last book that I re have read so far this year is called Amy Snow and this book uh, when I started out I really liked it I actually didn't know when it was written or even what it was about and I um, I, I felt like it was written in Charles Dickens time or Jane Austen or something like that and so you can tell what time period I like that books are written in in that 19th century um, time and it was actually written just a couple within the last 10 years and but just at the beginning you didn't feel like it was it felt so different and so good and um, just very much in that style of writing uh, it was a sort of a mystery at the beginning it's a girl whose um, guardian dies and her guardian leaves her a trail through these letters and through books and different places that they've been um, when they were together and so the main character Amy Snow has to follow this trail and figure out this secret so it's kind of at the beginning you think oh we're gonna find out who her parents are because you don't know that um, but about halfway through the book the character Amy Snow actually guesses what it's going to be and um, then when you get to the end you figured out that her guess was right but you already kind of knew that it was going to be for the last half of the book so it kind of ruins the whole suspense and the excitement at the end so it was a book that started out really good and then I was disappointed at the end as far as um, stuff that was bad stuff that was in there there was a couple of conversations which were um, just not necessary uh, they were to show um, the bad character of this man but I think that the author could have done that in a um, less explicit way and um, could have subtly added that that character development in but um, it was just in like a short conversation that was added in there but uh, just was very uncomfortable so I think I would give it a three out of five overall just um, which I seem to be giving to a lot of books but it, it just it was well written and it was an interesting story but when you get to the end you just realize that it wasn't really all that you thought it would be and you can read um, Jane Austen books and Charles Dickens books that I think would be a lot better than that and they have morals to them um, and try lessons so I would not recommend this over um, just good classic books so I, I would say for Amy Snow I would give it um, 3 out of 5 and say that an older teenager adult um, could read it and be fine but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to anyone so out of these 10 books that I've read so far this year my favorites would definitely be um, Persuasion by Jane Austen this one and um, then Alas Babylon I really like that so you have a little bit of a modern book with a, um, a sort of dystopian storyline and then you have an older book with just their typical you know Jane Austen romance um, 19th century book so those were my favorite and um, throughout the rest of this year I'm going to read 42 more books hopefully so I will keep y'all updated I will do reviews maybe for the next um, five books that I read I'll do some reviews on those and I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe hit the like button and turn on the notifications so that you're notified whenever I post my next couple of videos which will be coming out in the next couple of weeks so see y'all